as I told you before, passive methods like highlighting, rereading, rewriting, making notes over and over, it's not gonna cut it. I'm telling you now, it's not going to cut it this time. It's the difference between an A star student and a grade C student. You really need to implement these in your revision sessions. And this tip basically helped me get an A star in my biology exam. Hey guys, it's Shola and today I'm going to be teaching you how to get an A star in A level biology like I did. This video is going to be extremely helpful, it's going to be comprehensive, I'm going to go through everything including an exam question and we're basically just going to go step by step on all the tips and tricks I use to get an A star in A level biology. But before we do, you guys know the drill, be sure to like, comment and subscribe and share this with friends as it really helps to support my channel. Let's jump straight in. So let's talk about step one which is optimising your studying. As you guys know, biology is such a content dense subject, it has so much much to learn and almost so little time to do it so it's really really important that you optimize your studying and you only study the things that you need to know and you study in the most effective ways because you don't want to be wasting time doing stuff like highlighting rereading it may have helped for GCSEs but for A levels it's not going to help at all also it's very important to note that a lot of the time your teacher may not have enough time to go through all of the content because of how much content there is so you don't want to necessarily rely on what you're learning in class and you want to make sure that you can get ahead of the class and to learn things by yourself to avoid yourself having to memorize all of these long topics at the end by yourself because it's going to be really hard if you leave it all to the end so let's talk about mapping out your learning if you guys have been watching my videos for any length of time you guys know what i'm going to say use the specification you guys have been doing it from gcse's and in a levels that's when it matters more than ever because there's so much content and the content is much harder so you don't want to be learning things that you don't need to know so try to map out your learning from the start of the year so you always know what you are going to do what you need to learn and the specific points for each subtopic so before you go to a lesson you should have these subtopics on a page print out the specification print out a checklist and always have it to hand because you want to ensure that you're perfectly hitting these points without going too far and what it also means is that you can get ahead of the class whilst sticking to the specification whilst learning what you need to learn and it also works as a checklist so as you learn these new stuff by yourself you can tick it you can tick whether you made flashcards on it you can tick whether you've done exam questions it's just a method of tracking your progress so that it doesn't come to exam season and you're looking at the specification for the first time and you're seeing things you've never seen before you don't want to leave it to that so please don't do that so now let's talk about active learning it's basically learning but let's actually make it stick let's actually make it stay in our brain for a long time as i told you before passive methods like highlighting rereading rewriting making notes over and over it's not gonna cut it i'm telling you now it's not going to cut it this time unlike these methods active learning basically requires participation in order for you to engage with the concepts and this basically means that you're more likely to understand it and you're more likely to memorize it for the long term and by actively learning you can also identify gaps in your knowledge and make sure that you fill these gaps before the exam before the mocks and just basically have a deeper understanding of the subject biology questions are all about application so you might have to get knowledge from multiple different topics and combine it into one question so it's really important that you gain a deeper understanding of all of the topics so that if a random question is to come up of some concept that you've never seen before you can basically go back to these other topics and and use it to answer the question. This is really important for those basic topics at the start of the year, at the start of AS and year 12. But these topics are going to follow you throughout the whole A level course. So it's really important that you get a good understanding of these, make a summary. You can basically write down all the key points for that topic so that in the next year, when you're learning more complicated topics, you can refer back to these and know that it all links together. Biology all links together. And also, it's really important to start forcing yourself to do those harder subjects when you're revising. Stop doing those easy subjects. Stop doing some biology over and over again it's time to move on you need to move on you need to do the liver you need to do the kidney you need to move on and go to the harder topics because at the end of the day the more that you avoid this the more painful it's going to be when it comes to exam season and you're cramming all of this you can hardly understand it you're in tears you're crying guys please don't leave it to that and start doing these harder topics as soon as they come up as soon as you learn a topic and you know this topic is going to be hard put the work in do the questions go to your teacher stop leaving things on to the last minute because i promise you it's going to be suffering it's going to be suffering and i'm telling you now so now let's talk about flashcards and how you can use flashcards to help you in biology biology basically contains a lot of little facts that you need to know in order to answer these one mark two mark questions and you might think why would i waste my time on these like it's okay if i skip one mark that one mark can be the difference between you getting an a star on a or a b between a c and honestly it's really important for a level a levels are really really important for when you're going into university so you really don't want to miss out on that grade requirement that you need just because you can answer this 
one mark question. So the best ways to memorize these little facts that come up is to make sure that you do flashcards and do flashcards in an effective way. Ideally, you should do a question on the front and try to frame this in a way that it would be in the exam. This basically helps your brain to be ready for the exam and to be more likely to answer the questions in the way that the exam board wants you to. And if you ever come across these questions in a past paper, in a set of questions that you're doing, be sure to add the mark scheme to the back of the flashcard. So question on the front, answer on the back, and the answer should be something that's exam worthy and it should include all of the keywords that you need to get for marks and highlight those keywords because as you guys know biology and keywords go hand in hand you can think that you got a question right like you literally answered it to the best of your ability and it practically answers the questions perfectly but you didn't use the keywords that they want so you don't get any marks and it's really annoying so the way to avoid this is to make sure you're implementing these keywords into your flashcards into all of the questions you answer because these keywords always come up and you always need to include them to get the full mark your flashcards should not include absolutely everything. If you can't read out the answer for your flashcard in your head and it's probably too much on the flashcard and you need to split it into two. I would really recommend doing these online because biology as you guys know has a lot of content and if you do it on paper flashcards you're gonna have like a million at the end of year 13. Now let's talk about how you can master your exam techniques for A-level biology. Once you are 50% confident in the content it's time to start doing those questions. A lot of people they really want to get completely confident in the topic they want to know everything off by head the whole specific specification for that topic off by head and guys this is not realistic if you wait until this happens you're not going to have enough time to do all of the questions so as soon as you're 50% confident you can answer a few questions you know what the topic's about it's time to start doing past paper questions and the best place for this is visit some maths tutor as you guys know it has every single topic and it's also very detailed in the sense that there's a lot of questions on each subtopic so you want to go into the topic that you're currently learning in class and you want to start to complete these and when you complete these, the main, main thing is that you mark them according to the mark scheme and you start to memorize the way they want you to answer the question. The more you do this, the more it will form patterns in your brain and the more likely you are to get full marks in the next paper, in the next mark and in your real exams. Don't underestimate the importance of practice when it comes to biology because it's literally everything. It's the difference between an A star student and a grade C student. This should actually make the bulk of your revision sessions instead of making notes, instead of making flashcards. Obviously, those are important to understand and to memorize the main thing comes to the exam questions. The more you get something wrong whilst revising is better for you because it means that you're less likely to get them wrong in the actual exam and you're basically saving yourself the trouble for the future. And this tip basically helped me get an A star in my biology exams. It's basically answer the questions that are the easiest first. So as soon as you get the paper, don't start writing on the first page. Go through the entire paper and see the questions that you find easy and see the questions that you're more likely to spend a lot of time on. Do these questions that you find easier first and basically build up your marks like it's game if you waste time on this six month question that you know that you don't know any of the content you are literally wasting the time that you could do the questions that you actually know and perform those to the best of your ability so it's basically a game of find what's easiest for you do it quickly when you see a hard question that you know it's going to be really hard for you fold over the paper and you can basically think about that question whilst you're doing the exam paper it might actually come to you that you actually do know the answer but you just needed the time to think about it so use that time that you're doing those little questions those easier questions to help you for those harder questions and the more you do this method the more you'll see that it actually works for you and that it changes your grade drastically when answering questions in biology you also make sure to write it in bullet points don't be writing stories upon stories to the point where you have to ask for extra paper because the examiner is not going to be happy to read this it just ruins the examiner's perception of you so really try to be quite succinct and quite neat in the sense you answer these questions in bullet points and you try to hit those marks so each bullet point should be a mark so now let me show you how i would use this method to answer and exam question. So we have the question here, it's basically talking about a water frog, you don't really need to know this water frog, and it's talking about the large folds in its skin that it has, and also how frogs are able to absorb oxygen through their skin as well as their lungs. So that's really important, so they're able to absorb it through their skin, and also they said that they have large folds in their skin, so that must be related in some way. Now we have the first question which is, suggest why the water frog has evolved these really large folds of skin. So basically, think about large folds and think about other topics this is basically talking about diffusion think about other ways that humans are adapted to absorb air to absorb oxygen and if you think about it you can think about the alveolus in the human and how these have a lot of folds and this basically increases the surface area which increases the rate of diffusion so these large folds increase the surface area to volume ratio of the skin which basically increases the rate of diffusion and why is this important this is important because the pond does not have a 
as much oxygen as we have in the air so ponds have little oxygen this is really important because if this frog did not have all of this folded skin it may not be able to effectively absorb the oxygen that it needs for its body to work they basically adapted to the pond and the low oxygen levels and basically have their skin folded so that they can absorb more oxygen and that really makes sense because why would they adapt to do something that wasn't helpful for them and then the next question is when out of the water the frog is able to use its lungs to absorb oxygen these lungs contain specialized aceous exchange surfaces and then they want us to describe and explain how one feature of the lungs provides efficient gas exchange surface so this basically refers back to the little facts that you need to know so you need to think about the human and you should have basically memorized the gaseous exchange that occurs in a human one of these i can say is the lungs have a very good blood supply and this blood supply basically helps to move the oxygen move the carbon dioxide so that it basically maintains a very high concentration gradient which basically increases the speed of fusion so you want to say two points because it's two marks lungs have a good blood supply and this maintains a high concentration gradient which basically increases the rate of fusion so these questions aren't particularly hard but it's really important that when you see this kind of question and you see this frog you might think oh my gosh we were never taught about this frog i don't know how i'm gonna answer it use the content they give you in the question think about what topic it relates to i made the link that it relates to diffusion and also gaseous exchange and also like the organs of the body and then i basically use this to be able to answer the question effectively by using the stuff that i already know biology is one of those topics where they're gonna throw in the most weirdest animals you've seen the most weirdest plants you've seen and ask you okay why does it have this and you just have to use the knowledge that you have to answer the question don't be scared by these questions because you guys know it if you've been going for this specification you have that guarantee that you've gone through everything so don't be scared because sometimes it actually boils down to common sense so now let's talk about the best resources you can use for a level biology my number one tip is to stop relying on your textbook guys i know in gcse your textbook it probably had everything that you needed and it wasn't too hard to read and it was okay but guys some of these textbooks that they're making these days i don't know what they're trying to do but they basically make them so long that it's so hard to read it most of the time sometimes they include stuff that you don't need to know like little facts and little tips and i don't know like at the end of the day biology is so hard already i don't want to be learning this stuff that i don't need to know as i said before use the specification before you even look in the textbook make sure you know what you need to know and anything you don't need to know cut it out the textbooks sometimes don't have the best way of explaining topics so it might be really hard to understand it if you just use the textbook so i really recommend using videos especially for really hard concepts so for example i really struggled with the kidney and also how the nephron works and the textbook didn't do any favors in that so i really recommend to just search the example that you're using and then search for the topic you're struggling with and something should come up which basically meets the specification and also explains it in a really good way and it's also an effective way of revising when your brain is just not there you're tired you don't want to be writing anything down but you still want to learn and past papers guys as i told you before the more you do these past papers the more likely you are to get an a star on a in your biology exam make the effort to start these as soon as possible even if you haven't finished the specification even if you haven't finished the topic start these and any question that you'd feel like i've never learned this before cross it out and do what you can because there's so many exam papers to get through i really recommend going from 10 years back and doing all of those papers because you'll basically see a pattern you'll see the questions that always come up every year required practicals that they always test you on the maths questions the way they address different topics and it's really really effective in helping you be prepared for the exam you only walk into that exam and you don't know oh how are they going to test this topic how are they going to test this topic what am i going to have to learn about this required practical the more you do all of these papers the more you mark them all of it will already be in your head without you even having to try if there's any specific processes like dna replication respiration that come up in these exams memorize it the way the marks team wants you to memorize it because this is the most effective way you can get full marks in that question when it comes to processes and things that don't change your biology like regurgitating facts these things will never change so if you get a question that's like that make special note of that question turn it into a flashcard and memorize it exactly just to maximize your chances of getting full marks in that question if it does come up in your exam so guys that is the end of the video i really hope you enjoyed it and i really hope you found it helpful as i told you before be sure to subscribe because it really helps to support my channel and also like and comment comment down below on what you want my next video to be whether you want an a-level video a general study video or whatever you want to see i'll see you guys next time bye